Hey everyone, welcome to Upta. Have you ever needed data? Data that you can use in your idea? Well, I'm going to show you how to sneakily get that data from a private API. But enough of this. Let's get to it. Oh jeez, you're back already. I'm going to need a longer intro. So we're going to use a tool called Mitten, specifically Mitten Proxy, or Mitten, Mitten. That's a fun word to say. Otherwise known as Man in the Middle. What's Man in the Middle, Cyrus? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I spent a few hours learning how to make slides just for this occasion. So how does the Man in the Middle work? We have a device and we have a server. The device sends a request to the server. The server validates the request and sends back the data to the device. So how do we capture that data that has authorization in it? We insert a man in the middle. The device then sends it through the man in the middle. He's able to read it and he sends it onto the server. The server validates it as if nothing was wrong and sends it back through the chain back to the device. So to get started, you're going to want to go to midimproxy.org and these are the Mac installation instructions you can use brew to install it it's quite easy but if you're looking for other platforms such as Windows or Linux you just go here and click on other downloads and it'll give you the binaries and installers to download so in my case I'm running a Mac so I would need to enter terminal and I can run brew install midim proxy I've already installed this so this might not work but if you install it, it should work first time. So mine's finished installing or failed to install because it's already installed. So I'm just going to increase the size so you can see that a bit easier. As you can see, so 501 is already installed. So that's fine. We can use that. Now I'll be doing this for iPhone. You can use any device you want. If we have a look at the documentation, we have installation instructions and tutorials for all different types of devices certificates profiles you name it it's got it so you can have a look at that we'll be focusing on iphone in this episode let's go to getting started we can see that we have a midim web which is a web-based gui for this so let's start that uh, midim web once that boots up, opens up in a new tab, and we've got Midim Proxy running in the background. Now with the man in the middle, Proxy, running in the background on the computer, we have to configure our iPhone to talk through it. So let's have a look at that. First things first, we need the IP address of our computer. So we can get that by looking at our network settings. In our case, network settings on the Mac, we can see I have a local IP address of 192.168.1.107. We need that to point our device to that IP address. Now on your device, you're going to want to go to your Wi-Fi settings. Go to your current network, and you want to configure a proxy for it. You can see mine's already been configured. You want to make sure you clicked on manual, and you enter your IP address of your local computer. In my case, that was 192.168.1.107, and the port will be 8080. Once that's configured and saved, you then visit Safari, and you go to mitm.it. This presents you with a certificate that you need. So we'd click on Apple. It says, this website trying to download a configuration profile. Do you want to allow this? Why, yes, I do. Profile downloaded. Review the profile in the settings app if you want to install it. So we will go through to the settings app. Profile downloaded. And we will see over here, we want to install MITM proxy. Insert your passcode and confirm the install. Now, iPhone has a bit of an extra security measure that you want to get through. So in this case, you need to go to General, About, right down to Certificate Trust Settings, and you want to enable full trust for root certificate of the MITM proxy. Once that's enabled, click Continue, and we can head back to the computer. Now it's onto the fun stuff. So on the left, we have my iPhone. And on the right, we have the MITM proxy. 
Now we can already see data is being sent through the proxy and we are able to intercept it. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and get the API information from Thingiverse. Now Thingiverse already has a public API. And why wouldn't we use that? You should be using that. But for legal reasons, I'm just going to make sure we don't cause any trouble and I'm going to use this to access the private API. But since they already have a public API, I assume that wouldn't matter. So let's have a look. So if we open up Thingiverse now, and we can see a bunch of data coming through. If we have a look at this path here, we can see API Thingiverse.com uses me. We can see that our phone made a request to the Thingiverse. And if we have a look on the right hand side, through the request, through the response, we get all this data coming back. We can see that this was the data sent back from the server. And right over here we can see authorization using a bearer token. We can now grab that bearer token, put it into Postman or put it into our own app and request the same endpoint to get the data back. So we're going to give that a go. So I've written a very simple node server on the right. We're just using Axios to make a get request to the URL providing the token as a header and then passing the result, sending it as content type application JSON and sending it back to the browser just so we can see what it brings. So what we need to do now is we need to find our endpoint we want. So let's say we wanted to get the featured 3D printing pieces. Now we want to copy that URL. We want to use that exact URL. So let's make sure we can copy that exactly. We will place that into the URL field. No, that didn't copy. We will place that into the URL field. We will then grab that bearer token that we saw earlier and place that into the token variable. Now, if we save that, let's run this node server. So it should be listening on port 3000. So if I visit port 3000 now, I previously had a hello world, but if we visit and refresh the page, we should get the results. Let's have a look. So refresh. There we go. There's the JSON from the API using the authorization that we managed to sniff out using the man in the middle. Thank you for getting this far in the video. I hope to make many more, more so what we can do with coding. I might have some maker videos up my sleeve, but I won't give too much away. So I guess like and subscribe to keep me motivated. And I hope these videos will help inspire some to stay curious and join me on my learning journey. Have a great day.